In this video, I will go over a few construction methods that can be used to create a footing for a post or a pier that would be used for some type of a repair underneath a subfloor, subfloor framing. This would be a floor framed instead of a concrete slab. And um, it, basically these methods can be used for new construction as well as for repairs. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one here. This particular post base, the concrete here, is, um, and a lot of times it's 12 inches by 12 inches and 12 inches deep. That would be 12 inches into the soil. So don't just pour a 12 inch by 12 inch and have it sticking up six inches because that would only be six inches deep. So 12 inches into the soil, 12 inches wide is a pretty standard measurement for a single story home. And uh, but uh, again, I'm not an engineer. I'm just throwing out a few ideas here. You have a two story home. You, want, you might want to make it a little bigger. How's that for uh, Bigger usually is better, especially with concrete footings. Just don't make them too big. So this here actually has a post base connector and a post to a beam connector. But these come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. Not going to go into a lot of detail on that. Um, but uh, they used to actually just build. I think I have a picture of it here. They actually used to just pour concrete and then have a piece of wood on top and then the post sat on top of that and I've actually came to jobs before where none of this was nailed and it's hard to imagine but uh, you know it might have had one nail in and another nail in here but the, some of these buildings lasted a long time and they're still standing up so hard to argue with. Um, uh, you, you're probably going to want to have at least two inches here from the top of the soil to the top of the um, concrete here. Um, some some building inspectors might want to see or engineers might want to re, might want to see six inches, but um, again that's hard to say. You come in and you make something like this six inches off the ground, you might not have enough room for all your connectors or your piers, um, especially with an 18-inch crawl space. So uh, that that could be pushing it there. Just another view of the connector. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the ways you can use. You can always assemble it this way. Um, dig your hole, put everything together, and then pour your concrete. Form, put a form around it. Um, you know, one stake, two stakes. You might need three or four stakes. I'll leave that up to you. You pour the concrete, strip the forms, and there you have it. Another method that can be used would be to um, form it up and then hang the um, post base. It would need to be supported somehow. You could do this in a variety of different ways depending on what you're working with. Uh, if you already have your beam in here and it's into place, why not do it with the method that we just that I just showed you? But if you aren't, you don't have the beam in place, you want the concrete footing in, with the connector before you start on your repair and I understand that you need to somehow hold the post base in its proper position before um, you can pour the concrete. And I know a lot of people just come in and stick these things in after it's done. Well sometimes you do that and they're off a little bit. You know if you do something like this and you double check it and make sure it's in the right spot then you're probably going to be a lot better off. Just another view of it here, you know, you would nail this to a couple of stakes, nail through the connector to the um, support board, and then have a stake at each end, and that might work. Pour your concrete, and there you have it. Now, what about using piers? They actually sell these at most lumber yards and home improvement centers, and... That's fine. If you want to use these, um, go ahead. I wouldn't. I would just. I would use one of the methods I already showed you. I like the column bases and um, the connectors here. But uh, again, you might have already purchased these, or you might have existing ones you want to get rid of. Then this might actually work. So what you would do there would be to attach the. You can do it either way. You can pour the concrete, set the pier 
or hang the pier off of the um, post or off of the beam and then um, get it where you need it and then pour the concrete. But you're going to need to make sure that you have enough room on each side. Here you can see that there isn't enough room. So a 12 inch by 12 inch footing might not be big enough if the bottom of your pier is 12 inches by 12 inches. I say that, but you could always pour the concrete, set the pier. Um, I understand that would work just fine too. And that's actually what they did a long time ago. They would pour the concrete in the footings and then set the piers on top of them. And the piers really didn't um, go into the concrete. Um, they sat basically on top of the concrete and um, could actually be removed quite easily if, if needed. This might give you a better idea what I'm talking about, but in this one here, I raised the pier to set, um, to connect to the po to the beam without a post. And uh, this right here might work out well for you too. You can always dig a footing and then set the, set the pier. And if there's like an inch or two gap between the bottom of the footing, or the top of the footing and the bottom of the pier, you can always fill that with concrete and just kind of let it spill over a little bit or form it up to um, work, whatever is fine. But sometimes the piers, if you're making a repair and you've got the beams in place, you can hang the pier off of it, pour the concrete. If not, um, then you can. And, it's, and this, this is a good example of what I was talking about. If you get the beams in position where you want them, you can raise the pier up to the beam and nail it to the bottom like this. And this way you're not going to need two pieces of hardware. And then you can, you can raise the footing as needed. Uh, if, and, and again, if you, if you just did some math here, if this was a 6-inch beam and this is a 12-inch footing, then and we need an 18-inch crawl space from the top of our joist, to the bottom of the ground, that's where we would be. So if we have a 12 inch pier and a six inch, um, six inch beam supporting everything, then this would be all, this would work out uh, quite nicely. But if you poured the concrete and set the pier before putting the wood in, you could be a half inch high, or you could be putting shims underneath this. And if you did do something like that, make sure this is a little lower. If you have a five and a half inch beam, uh, make sure you have six inches here. You can always put a piece of plywood underneath it or some filler, but uh, it's not going to do you any good to start notching this stuff, especially if you're if you need a five and a half inch beam and you notch it down to four inches. That's not going to work. Not going to make anyone happy. So another view of it there, without the concrete footing. And there we have it. Here's an example of the beam with the post to beam connector and the post to base connector. And here are the screws I was talking about that will screw into these holes to attach everything together. And of course, these will nail together. So the beam, the post, building hardware, and the concrete footing. You can see this was probably formed with two by six, giving us about five and a half inches here, a nice distance from the top of the soil to the concrete here when it's all said and done. This is an example of how it connects together the post. And again, this right here, you're probably thinking, well, how this is kind of hokey here, you know? Well, this is what the engineer drew in. This is how tall the concrete is. And you can see that we really don't have much of a choice. That's the way it's going to get built. But either way, you get an idea of what the connectors would look like here. And uh, if you have longer connectors or longer posts, then this might uh, look a little nicer. But, uh, you know, another thing I'd like to point out here, and this is um, something that's obvious now that we can see it. But uh, let me go back to the other picture. Make sure that you install the building hardware to where it's going to work. If this post space would have been rotated 90 degrees to where the straps were on this side. You can see where it wouldn't work very good. So make sure that your building hardware is going to work, especially when you're pouring it in concrete and you won't be able to turn it 
after the fact. And again, I hate to say it, but if you're doing a repair and you put everything together like this and then pour the concrete, um, you would have seen that mistake. Um, but afterwards, uh, you're not going to be, you might not see it. So um, like I said, it might be better to connect everything together and, start, you know, connect everything if you can and then pour the concrete. But if you can't, at least make sure that the post base is in the right spot. You know, if you're doing a repair, could you simply cut this? Yeah, but again, that's extra work and that's not what you want to be doing. Here's the other connector we already went over. Here's an example of what the piers were years ago. You can see the block right here. Um, block simply sitting on top of a concrete footing. Give you a better idea. This actually looks like they didn't even form it. They just kind of put some concrete in here and then um, set the uh, piece of redwood here on top of it and that was it. So and like I said I've came across these before where there aren't even any nails in anything. They just have it sitting on top of it. Hard to imagine but that is the way it is in the construction world. So be prepared if you're working on a project to find run into stuff and think who in the heck did this? Well somebody did it years ago whether they were drinking or not we will let that one go there so anyway hope the video helps and it is off to the next video